Sister Ashley has a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Sister Elizabeth on Friday. And so happy birthday to y'all. Amen. Then Saturday we've got that special service at 11 a.m. I want to make sure we're all here. Amen. Don't want to miss that, as Pastor said. So I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Amen. And then Sunday back here, 10 o'clock service. Or 10 o'clock prayer, 10.30 service time. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You have a need tonight. Let's go ahead and pray. Amen. By the lifting of your hands. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray for God's perfect will for this service tonight. Jesus, and God, we love you. Lord, you know every need, every situation. God, you see every hand that's been lifted tonight. Jesus, we're trusting you. God, we're believing you for it, Lord, for meeting the needs. In Jesus' name, God, we want you to have your way tonight. Your will be done in this service. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for it, church. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, have your way, mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh.
Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I want to walk every day with my Savior. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He is so amazing. He's so wonderful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mere words cannot describe how amazing our God is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and receive our tithes and offering this evening, Brother Corona. If you would come and receive it tonight. Hallelujah, God. We love you. We worship you. God, we pray that you bless this offering in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Y'all remember that? There to sing forever of His saving grace on the streets of glory. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands, church. Hallelujah, Jesus.
few minutes ago before I came out of my office, my cousin, one of my cousins, another one of my cousins, amen, uh, is very, very sick. She's got pneumonia, and uh, her husband just passed away just January this year. So we want to go to prayer and pray for her that God will heal her. Amen. Amen. Let's just do that right now. Jesus, I'm asking you right now to touch Gail. Lord, you know exactly what's going on. God, I'm asking you to dispatch angels to her side right now. Let healing take place, God. Rebuke the pneumonia. Lord, send it packing. God, we believe you right now. God, it's that spirit of infirmity. God is trying to put his hand upon her. We come against it right now, right now. We believe you. We trust you, oh God. For the healing power of the Holy Ghost at work, Lord. God, we praise your mighty name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory right now. My God, I love you, Lord. I worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, that's it. Praise his name. Praise his name. He is worthy. My Lord, you are worthy today, God. And we thank you, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight, aren't you? Amen, amen, amen. I appreciate everybody that's here tonight. And uh, we're just going to continue on with our lesson on preparing for revival. Hallelujah. Amen. We're still talking about personal revival right now. And uh, this is lesson two. And I want to teach just for a little while from this subject, the choice. Come on. Matthew chapter 25, and you can be seated. We're just going to teach, so I'm going to have a lots of scripture tonight. Amen. I think it's probably 10 or 12 pages of notes. I'm not really sure. I don't even try to count them anymore. <laughs> then shall the kingdom of heaven, this is Matthew chapter 25, it's right after Matthew 24. Amen. And uh, Matthew 24, of course, is the chapter where. The apostles asked Jesus, what will be the sign of the end and the sign of your coming? Amen. And then in verse chapter 25, he continues on. He said, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wives took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom carried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Hallelujah. Now, I've, I've taught on the ten virgins and I've preached about the ten virgins and we do understand that this story actually represents the church. Yes, Amen. Amen. The virgins are the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, there was a problem here. We had five foolish virgins that did not have enough oil for the lamps they had and they didn't bother taking extra with them. Hmm. Hallelujah. And then the five wise virgins not only had oil in their lamps, they had a, a vessel full of extra oil. Now here's the question. How much of the Spirit of God will be enough to get us to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Yeah. Hallelujah. How much of the Spirit of God is it going to take to get you off the ground? Amen. And I'm going to teach just for a little while on this subject, the choice. Hallelujah. Now you can choose to be wise or you can choose to be stupid. Now I'm not going to say foolish because I'm just going to say stupid, okay? It's pretty stupid to not be ready to meet the Lord. As simple as it is, it's pretty dumb, amen, to not be ready to meet God. 
Hallelujah. Now, you know, we know he's coming back. Hallelujah. And, and the word of God said he's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready. It's, he's not coming back for a people who are halfway doing this. Amen. He's not coming back for a people who want to argue about Scripture. He's not going to come back for those. Amen. He's coming back for a church that has completely made itself ready. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he's coming back for them that are looking for his appearing. Hallelujah. Now, can I tell you there was a problem here in, in this, this uh, story of the virgins. So the Bible said they all slumbered and slept. And they slumbered and slept knowing the bridegroom was coming. That's where we're at in the church age now. Amen. I'm telling you, this is where we're at. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Because we, you can go to church after church after church after church that teaches truth. And you're going to find a lot of sleepy Christians. And I'm not talking about sleepy as in yawn and going to sleep during the service. I'm talking about folks that are sleepy in the spirit. Amen. They're lax in the spirit. You know what they are? They're the foolish virgins. They, they have, come on, the Bible tells me they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Amen. Now, we've always attributed that to the other church world, but can I tell you, there's only one really church world. Hallelujah. Amen. There's only one church. Oh, come on. Amen. All these others that claim to be churches, amen, they're going out of business. A lot of them are. You know why? Because they don't have anything there to offer. But can I tell you tonight, hallelujah, amen, we've got to hold the truth. And we're not about to sell out. Amen. We got our mind made up. We got our foot on the rock. Hey, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to his coming. Amen. Come on. He may come for me tonight. He may come for you tomorrow. Amen. You don't know. The Bible said no man knows the day or hour that he's coming back. But can I tell you, he might not come back for a long time. It may be 10 more years before he comes back. But if he delays his coming a little bit, amen, he may come for you tonight. He may come for you tomorrow or me tomorrow. Amen. So we've got to be ready. Hallelujah. And the Bible bears that out. Be ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. The problem with the five virgins were they knew the bridegroom was coming. They didn't know when he was coming. So they thought, well, we've got enough oil to just kind of put her along here. And then, uh, you know what, we'll go grab some more oil and then we'll keep going. Amen. He, he's, he's not going to come for a while. So you, we get this lackadaisical attitude that, that the Lord, we hear that. I've heard it all my life. The Lord's coming back. I've had the Holy Ghost over 50 years. I've heard it all my life. The Lord's coming back. You know what? I'm 50 years closer to the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, that's how I look at that. Amen. So I understand. All right. Let's look back at another time when God was on his way to the earth. This time, though, he was going to destroy the whole thing. Mm. Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39 said, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Hallelujah. Let's go to the actual story in Genesis chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Does that sound like today? Yes. Amen. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Why? Because God did not make man to be stupid. God made man to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, come on. God, God created us to worship. 
God, that's all God created us for. We were not created to get out of here and, and see what all we could get in this life. Amen. He, he gave us his spirit. It didn't cost us one thing. Amen. He offered himself for us that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You're not really living life without the Lord. That's right. Amen. All right. Amen. Now. So he grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. God was not just going to wipe mankind. He was going to clean the earth of everything. Right. Amen. Yes, I think he's upset. Hallelujah. Now, if he was upset then, think about how upset he is now. My God. 6,000 years later, you've got a bunch of morons running around out here acting like a bunch of, of animals. Okay? I'm not going into that, but you know what I'm talking about. It, 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 it's ridiculously it's sick. It's sick. Amen. We live in a sick world. There is a sick society in our nation right now. And around the world, there's a sick society. Amen. But can I tell you what? Amen. God is getting ready to judge this world a second time. He's not going to destroy it this time with water. The Bible said next time it's going to be fire. Amen. But I understand that he's coming back. Before he destroys the world, he's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is what we're teaching tonight. Look at this, verse, verse 8. So God's been repenting. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Look at this. And Noah walked with God. There's the key right there. Hallelujah. The key for saving him and his family was the fact that he walked with God. Hallelujah. Amen. That saved his household. It saved everybody in his family. They all got on the ark and they were all saved. Amen. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, the word just in verse 9 here, you can go back and pick up verse 9. Let's read this again. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Now, this word just actually comes from the Hebrew word, word sadi, meaning righteous in conduct and character, and righteous as justified and vindicated by God. He was a righteous man. And, and he was not just a righteous man. He was a righteous man in God's eyes. It doesn't matter how we look in other men's eyes. It doesn't make any difference how we look in our own eyes, especially. Amen. It only matters how we look in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hear me today. Amen. So, in the next chapter, we actually see God referring to Noah as righteous. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah... Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Peter also referred to Noah as a preacher of righteousness. Think of Peter 2, chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Look at this. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemning them with an overthrow. Making them an example unto those that should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing. Vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now, 
Here he goes on to describe who those unjust are. But chiefly, in other words, mainly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. That's talking about church government. Presumptions, presumptions are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. That's talking about church government, all right? Our righteousness in God's eyes amounts to nothing. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we, we, who are we? What, what are we doing here? God has placed us here to serve Him. Hallelujah. But, but we get all tied up in the world, Brother West. We, we understand that we're play, placed here and we come to church and, and we offer God our little patty cake of praise three times a week and and, and then, you know, we, the rest of the week, He never even knows we're around. Now, I'm going to tell the truth. The only way He knows you're here spiritually is when you spend time with Him. Hallelujah. you got to make time daily with the Lord. Amen. His desire is to spend time with his people. Hallelujah. Amen. His, okay. When Israel came out of Egypt land, he gave instructions to Moses to build a tabernacle. Now he was already there in a cloud leading him in the daytime and a fire leading him at night. Amen. But he wanted to come and dwell in the midst of his people. And so Moses built a tabernacle and, and in that tabernacle was the Ark of the Covenant. And on the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat with the two cherubims on the ends of it. And the Bible said the Spirit of God dwelt between the cherubims. He came in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. And do you know with God actually dwelling right in the midst of them, they still got stupid. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're either going to be in or you're not going to be in. There ain't no halfway mark here. There ain't no straddling the fence. Either you got to make up your mind, I'm going to live for God with everything I've got. All right. But many folks are self-willed. Okay. People are self-willed. Amen. I'm going to do it my way. Bless God. You know, I understand the teaching. I understand what the Bible said. I know the pastor's teaching the right things. But by the same token, I just don't believe it that way. Well, duh. Hello. If I'm preaching the word of God and you're not believing it, you're not believing me. It ain't me you're not believing it. It's the word of God you're not believing. Amen. So you need to get a hold of this. And you need to get a prayer life. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Because you know what a prayer life will do for you? It will make you sensitive to the Spirit of God. So that when the Word of God is going forth, amen, the Bible said rightly dividing the Word of truth. So what happens is when the preacher's preaching, amen, your mind is, is dealing with all this stuff that's coming in from that man of God. And, and then if you are really where you should be in the Holy Ghost, you know what the Holy Ghost is going to do? It's going to kick out the things that are in your mind that don't belong to God. And you're going to latch on to more of the things of God. Hallelujah. You know why? Because your spirit really wants to serve God. Because that's what it was placed here for. Now, all right, let's look what Isaiah said. He was talking to, to backslid Israel. Isaiah 64 and 6, but we are all as an unclean thing. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 through 22 said, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. What? Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. You were dead in sin and trespasses, according to the Word of God. Yeah. And, and the Holy Ghost comes in. And it resurrects you into newness of life. Yes, sir. Amen. So without the Holy Ghost, there is no resurrection. 
So if you've never really received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, you are still living in your sin. You've never been set free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I'm just telling like it is. And, and so what happens is when you find a place with God and you repent of your sins uh, and you come clean before him and we put you down in the water in the name of Jesus, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. We put you down in Jesus' name. When you come out of that water, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost if your heart is right. Amen. Why don't people receive the Holy Ghost when they come out of water? Probably because there's some stuff they haven't let go of. Mm, okay. Now, there's, there's people that have been here in this church. They're no longer here because they didn't want to live this. I don't believe it takes all that to get to heaven. I'm sorry. I don't preach nothing but the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It does take the Word of God. It does take the Holy Ghost. It does take baptism in Jesus' name to get you to heaven. Hallelujah. If you've been baptized in the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, guess what happened? You might as well have been baptized in the name of a monkey. Amen. Because that's about as funny as it's going to get. But can I tell you that there is a power? You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it goes on to say you'll be witnesses, amen, of that power. But can I tell you that power that comes into you gives you the ability to overcome sin. Because in your flesh, in yourself, you do not have the ability to overcome it, period. So, amen. amen. It's got to have the power of God on the inside before it can happen. Now, Romans 6, 13 through 22 said, Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So we're, living, we're giving ourselves unto God as all of our members. That's our, our arms and legs and feet and all this stuff. You know, that's why when people get the Holy Ghost, many times they're, they're non-emotional, quote-unquote. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And they're to, they're to kill half the congregation sometime <laughs> when they get the Holy Ghost yes. because their non-emotional self just goes completely batty. Yes. Amen. You know, you know what that is? That is them yielding themselves yes. to God yes. to become a member of righteousness. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And God wants his people to be righteous and holy and pure and clean. All right. Look what it said. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. God doesn't want you to continue in sin. No, no the scripture. Paul said, what? Will we continue in sin that grace may abound? No way. No, that's kind of crazy. You know, I'm going I'm to... Hey, this is the way the world, the church world looks at this. I'm talking about that world out there, not this world in here. The church world out there said, well, you know, I, I've confessed my sins to the Lord one time, and uh, because I've confessed my sins, I can't just go ahead and live like I want to live. Because I'm once saved, always saved. I'm sorry, you ain't been saved the first time, much less the rest of it. Because until you repented of your sins, repentance means walking away from, not looking back at. When you repented of your sins, you, you're, you're not going back there. But, but most of the churches are, are teaching, and I've seen them put people right on the platform, amen, that we're still doing drugs. We had a guy coming here, and there was a goofy little church across the street over, started by the Washington It's not there no more. I don't know where they went. They might have got real big. I don't know. But but that guy that was here was not only doing drugs, he was selling drugs. And and he wanted to sing. I wouldn't let him sing. He get the Holy Ghost, dude. Get the Holy Ghost, you can sing all you want. Amen. I didn't really want him to sing rap here anyway, because we don't do rap. Amen. I'm going to wrap it up that way. Hallelujah. Amen. We ain't going to have rap here. There you go. 
So what he does, they're over there in the afternoon, getting out on the street with their with their their guitars and drums and all this stuff, and they're singing rap songs, rapping to Jesus. <laughs> and so, guess where my my, my guy goes? I'm working with him. And he's, he's, I'm talking to him about the Holy Ghost. I'm teaching him Bible studies. I'm trying to get him to come on into church. And say, hey, here's that group. He goes across the street. You know what they do? This guy's still a drug addict. He's still strung. They put him right up on the platform singing rap music. He went to a big meeting they had and sang rap. Mm. Okay. Now you know what you want to do about that. But you know what? They're sinning. Continuing sin. Because God's grace covers everything. I'm sorry, that is not the way this works. I'm not really sorry, I'm just saying it don't work that way. Amen. If you repent of your sins, you don't go back to your sin. You walk away from your sin. You leave it behind you. You walk toward God. The closer you get to God, the less of the world you're going to want. Amen. Now, so we're not under law, but under grace. What the end shall we sin? Because we're not under law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So Paul is saying, okay, you ain't got but two choices. Hello? Either you're going to yield yourself to God or you're going to yield yourself to the spirits of the world. That's the only choices you got. And the way he said, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, you've got a choice. Are you going to come into church and, and worship God and continue doing what you want to do? No. That, that, that's ignorant. That will send you straight to hell. You might die in a car wreck tomorrow. Why would you want to take the chance? Right. Amen. You know what I want to do? I want to come into the house of God. Of God with a clean heart. Hallelujah. Uh, come on. I want to come in here with a right mind. Amen. I, I want everything to be right between me and God. Hallelujah. Because if something should happen and I should die tonight, I want to be ready to meet him in the sky. I want to be ready to meet him. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be left behind. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so being and made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I mean, let me go ahead and read that out loud. I didn't read it. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Now Paul said, I delivered you this doctrine. I taught it to you. Now what you do with it is up to you. But it's no longer between me and you because I delivered it to you. It's between you and God now. Okay. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness. Do this unto holiness. We don't like that word holiness. Because the word holiness entails things we don't like. Because we like to live like the world. We want to live like the world. But I'm sorry. Holiness don't work that way. Amen. When you're coming in contact with a holy God, He wants you to be a holy people. Amen. Hallelujah. So look what He said. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you were serving sin, when you were serving hell and serving the devil, there was no righteousness about you. You got in trouble with the law. You got in trouble on, you know, with your spouse. You got in trouble with, with your mama. You got in trouble with everybody that was around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because why? You weren't serving God in righteousness. You were serving the world. You were serving sin. Hallelujah. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, you are no longer serving sin. So your desire should no longer be for the world. You have a choice. If you don't live for God, live for God all the way. Why do we want to try to halfway do this? Can I tell you, if you're trying to halfway do this, when God comes back, you'll be left behind. There 
Everybody awake out there? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. God is not going to come back for a people that are halfway made themselves ready. No sin can enter there. If it's in the Word of God and you're going against that, you're committing sin. I mean, that's just plain as it gets, okay? All right. So, from, for when you were the servants of sin, you were freed from righteousness. Verse 21, what fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Death is the end result of sin. Look at Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve. Amen. They were in the garden. Had everything made in the shade. Amen. The shade of the cool evening, they talked talk to God, just spend time with God. And then some squirrely little snake comes crawling up a tree. He said, hey, look over here at me. And Eve didn't question the talking snake. She just listened to him. And he began to lie to her. He began to tell her. Right. And, and, and she said, look, God has already said, if we eat of this tree, the day we eat of this tree is the day that we die. Uh -huh. What? You know what the devil told you? You shall not surely die. Hmm. He has never backed up anything God said. He always does the opposite. So a pastor's teaching something or preaching something and the, or somebody else is filling this pulpit and they're preaching something to you and it goes against your grain, but it's the Word of God. You know what you better do? You better pray about it seriously and you better change your ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when the Word of God comes through this pulpit under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and it pricks your heart and it, it, gets, it gets down into where you're living at, you know what it is? It's God trying to dig you up and help you prepare yourself for his coming. Amen. Now, all right, so let's go a little further. So what fruit then had you then in those things whereof you're now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Guess what happened? Adam and Eve committed that sin. They ate of the fruit that God had said don't eat of. And he said, the day you do it, you're going to surely die. The devil said, you won't die. Guess what happened? They didn't die. Not that day. They died a spiritual death. They lost contact with God. In fact, it was so bad, they knew God was coming in the garden that afternoon, that evening. And so what did they do? They found fig leaves. Now, fig leaves back then, I guess, weren't like they are now. I wasn't there making an apron out of fig leaves. It's probably y'all. <laughs> Anybody ever pick figs? Never pick figs? Okay. They got these great old big leaves on them. And these, little, these leaves got all these little tiny hairs on the back side of them. And when you reach your hand up in there, it irritates your skin really quick. Amen. And, and it can give you a rash like you wouldn't believe. And so they're making, maybe that's why God turned fig leaves into that kind of a deal because they made themselves aprons out of it. He's like, you won't do that again. <laughs> Not on my watch. Hallelujah. I'm going to put these things where you won't want to put them on your body. Nobody else in the Bible was ever recorded making fig leaf aprons. Amen. <laughs> Only them. Because after that, God let thorns grow, God let thistles grow, and I believe that's when he put the little hairs on the back of the pig leaves. Amen. Amen. But, but, but the thing was, they, he said, you're, you're going to surely die. And they said, well, we're not dead. I mean, we're, you know. Of course, they didn't really know what death was. They had never seen anybody die. The first thing they saw die was some animals. Because God sacrificed some animals to make coats for them, to make aprons for them, to, for them to wear to cover their nakedness. Up to that point in time, they had not been naked. Although they were, although they didn't have clothes, nobody knew they were naked. They didn't think anything about it. I mean, this is the way God made us. So what? So be it, you know? And they're going through there doing their own little thing. And they're, they're just listening to God and talking to God in the afternoon and the cool of the evening. And all of a sudden now, they can't face God like this. i got to have clothes on. Whoops. What does that tell you? Hmm. All these folks that go around without clothes on nowadays. 
are, you know, getting the clothes are getting less and less and less as the hotter it gets in the summertime. You know what? Amen. It, it, it's the same scenario all over again. Amen. They're 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 not willing to stand in the presence of God. Amen. Can I tell you today? Amen. You got God demands us to be holy, not only in the inside but also on the outside. Amen. God demands that, not me. God does. Amen. Why? Be ye holy, for I am holy. So holiness is not just a thought, it's an attribute of God. But it's also an attribute he wants his church to possess. All right, let me go a little further. For now being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness. And the end, everlasting life. So, so your fruit now uh, yields holiness. When the Holy Ghost comes in, it makes you put on clothes. It makes you want to cover up your nakedness. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes in, it changes every aspect of your world. Amen. Because you're standing in the presence of a holy God. Hallelujah. Amen. So what, what happens now? Being now? But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So living for God and living holy for God, although it don't make sense to some folks down here, can I tell you, if you're living holy and you're living, uh, come on, the Bible says holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. It's only a reasonable service to God that we live holy and acceptable lives. Amen. That's the limit. That's the minimum you can do is being holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. So if you're holy and acceptable unto God, amen, then you can have everlasting life in the end. Now let's go back to Genesis 6 and 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. The word perfect in the scripture comes from the Hebrew word tamium, meaning sound, wholesome, unimpaired, innocent, having integrity. Anybody know what integrity is? And look at this. What is complete or entirely in accord with truth and fact. So Noah was a just man, but he was also a perfect man in his ways. Hallelujah. God, God demands us to be perfect. Now, we're not perfect. We're, the Bible said we're striving for perfection. But you know what we can do? We can live without sin. Amen. That's right. Amen. We can live with integrity. Hallelujah. Amen. We can live in accord with truth. Hallelujah. That's why the Word of God tells me to buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. You've got to sell out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why Peter would refer to Noah as a preacher righteous. Why God would refer to him as being righteous. Amen. In God's eyes, in the midst of this crazy world, Noah stood out as a man who was sound, wholesome, innocent, and had integrity. A person who stood in accord with truth. That's what God demands of us. He wants us to be wholesome. He wants us to be innocent. Hello? Okay. He wants us to be sound. That's why the Bible tells us we have to get this sound doctrine. Amen. All right. And he had, we have to have integrity. Hallelujah. He stands in accord with truth. We've got to have that. Amen. The word tells us in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. A righteous person is sold out entirely to truth. And cannot be swayed by anything or anyone. He will always weigh out every wind of doctrine he hears with the word of God. If it doesn't line up, he rejects it as false doctrine. and simply continues to hold the truth of God's word. That's the deal. Amen. When you are walking with God in righteousness. Hello. Now. Now, I know there are people that are self-righteous. You know what I'm saying. But they got their nose up. There are the people that nearly drown every time it rains in West Texas. Hello. 
Amen. Because they got their nose so high up in the air. I mean, you know, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Okay. So, when you're walking with God, you walk to walk in truth. Hallelujah. You buy the truth, you don't sell out. We're living in a world where people now are selling out for just about anything. Remember a guy by the... Oh, Lord. Amen. Remember in the Word of God where there was an old boy that come be bopping up into his brother's camp and his brother had a pot of beans smoking? What did he say? Give me some of that pottage. Only if you'll sell me your birthright. And Esau turns around and sells his birthright now, I, I've been talking about stupid tonight. Stupid is what stupid does, okay? Uh, yeah. uh, amen? Did y'all catch that? Stupid is what stupid does. And, and so here comes Dean Bat Esau, bebopping up in the camp. He's been out deer hunting. Obviously, he's not a good hunter because he ain't come back with no meat. He's hungry. Amen? So I know he hadn't brought any meat or he'd already have ate. Hallelujah. So he comes back into camp. And there's his brother with a pot of beans cooking, just little beans. If you ever had little beans, you know what I'm talking about. You know, they're not that great, but hey, I guess if you're starving, they work. And, and so here he is. And, and, and he said, I'll, I want some of your beans. He said, okay, that's not a big deal. I want your birthright. And the idiot sells him his birthright for a bowl of beans. Hello. He's like, what good are beans going to do? I mean, what good's the birthright going to do to me if I'm dead? Oh, boy. The Bible said Esau despised his birthright. Can I tell you that if you despise the teaching of the Word of God, if you despise the Word of God, you know what? God will reject you. He rejected Esau. Amen. All right. Let's go look, brother. The difference in the five foolish virgins in the story of Matthew 25 is they did they chose to not live true to its fullness. So therefore their lamps were full of the oil. Oil represents the Spirit of God. In the Bible, they were willing to try to live for God with only a small portion. Now we call that a splash over blessing here. Amen. You know, you ever see people come to church for the West? And man, you know, they don't have a prayer life. They show up at church every service. That's good. I, I, you know, I want everybody to show up every service. But people, they'll come into a church house and they'll begin to worship and, and, and they're sitting there like a, a knot on a log and all of a sudden the Spirit of God begins to move on, on sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so next to them or they'll appear behind them, appear in front of them. All of a sudden you hear them, Woo! And they jump up and they begin to do a little war dance of some sort. Amen. You know what they just got? They just got a splash over blessing. Because they don't have a prayer life. They don't have a walk with God. All they're doing is they're feeling the Holy Ghost because they're sitting around a bunch of people that do pray. And they do feel after God. And they do know how to walk with God. And do live for God with all their heart, their mind, their soul, their strength. They, they give everything. They're sold out totally to God. Can I tell you, God is not coming back for somebody that's halfway sold out. It's either all or nothing. In God's kingdom. Yes, the reason that the foolish didn't get to go in was because they did not have enough spirit to carry them through the door. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Yes. It's important that you keep the spirit of God in your life at full tilt. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, let me go a further. All right. So they're trying to live for God with only a small portion we call a splash over blessing. Instead of completely immersing themselves in truth and wholeness. They were not allowed to enter in with the bridegroom. Titus says this about living righteousness. Look at this. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So he's coming back for a 
people that are looking for his appearing. But those people that are looking for it, you know what the difference between the foolish and the wise is? The foolish weren't really expecting it right now, so they didn't have enough oil to carry them the rest of the way. Listen, I've been in this 50 plus years. I've had the Holy Ghost 50 plus years. Amen. Can I tell you something was clicked in my mind 50 plus years ago as a young teenager that, you know what? He's coming back. He's coming back. I heard it preached all my life. I sat in classrooms and, and I, I watched Sister Betty Davis as, as she'll be teaching us and tears will be rolling down her cheeks as she's talking about that the Lord's coming back. Come on. Amen. Amen. You know why it affected her like that? Because she believed it. Yeah. And she lived it. Amen. You, if, if you believe that Jesus is coming back, okay, he's coming back for those that are looking for his appearing. If you're not really looking for his appearing, you're going to get a little sloppy with living for God. If I'm going to give everything I've got to live for God, then I can look for his appearing. Hallelujah. I, you know what? There's an old song that said, hey, look, keep your eyes on the skies. This could be the cloud he's coming back on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'll, we'll be riding down the road sometimes, and, and I'll see this unusual cloud, and I'll just keep watching that cloud. I'm thinking, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the one. Hallelujah. Maybe that's the one. You never know. But you know what? I, I want to be ready at all times. Hallelujah. I don't want to take this for granted because I understand. Amen. I, it may not be the rapture that takes me out. To, uh, the Lord may come back for me before he comes, before the rapture happens. Hallelujah. But even if he doesn't come back for me personally, I want to be ready. Amen. Amen. I've never had a problem living for God. I've never had to question anything about the word of God, about the people of God, about the men of God. Amen. All right, here's another story. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Now it came to pass, they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman called Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me alone to serve? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, notice, Martha was doing her best to serve the master. But she was doing it on a shallow level. Now, we look at the story and we think, well, Martha was the only one who was really serving Jesus. Mary was sitting on the floor listening to him. That's all he wants. Catch on to this, okay? Amen. He wants somebody that will spend time with him. Amen. Not somebody that will serve him on a, on a surface level. Amen. You can look at Martha and you can see her. She was in the kitchen getting, getting everything ready. She's making crumpets and tea or whatever. Most of y'all don't even know what crumpets are. So, Amen. And, and she's bringing this out to Jesus, you know. Hey, man, I've got this really nice tray fixed for Jesus, you know. And, uh, man, look at all this pretty stuff. I've got grapes. I've got, I've got cookies. I've got all this stuff on the tray. And i got my little silver pot with the coffee in it. And there's the creamer. And, you know, that's fresh cream from the cow. And, and, you know, everything is just right for Jesus. And that's what we think will get us to heaven. But that's only the surface stuff. Deeper down, amen, is when the person is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his voice. Hallelujah. Notice, the difference was... Martha was tuned into the natural. Mary was tuned into the spirit. Yes, sir. Mary was tuned into the voice of the Lord. 
Did you hear me? Mary was tuned in to the voice of the Lord. Martha was just doing all the surface stuff. You know, I'm taking care of the Lord. I'm doing the Lord's work. She was. She was doing the Lord's work. She was getting everything done, getting ready for Jesus. But while she's busy getting ready for Jesus, Mary's already enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Amen. She's already made the connection with Jesus. Hallelujah. Do, do you understand the difference? God does not want... He, it's okay. We do have to do the surface stuff, okay? That, that still has to go on. The church has to go on. And, and it, it requires all this surface stuff here. It really does. But at the same time, amen, the most important part is not what we do here. The most important part is the connection between us and Him. Listening to His voice. The problem with most people nowadays in the church where I'm not talking about our children, I'm talking about in the church is they are not tuned in to the voice of God. I'm just being straight, okay? The biggest problem in living for God nowadays is we're so tuned into the world that we totally miss it when God speaks to us about something. Oh Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I told you the story before about IHOP and, and Brad Davis's grandma and, and the gal that come in in the pajamas. It's just a matter of being tuned into the spirit. And, and, and so I sat there as long as I could and finally got up and went over and sat in the booth across from the girl and her boyfriend or husband or whatever it was and talked to them. Gave them what God told me to give them. That was it. And then I got up, went back to my table, and Sister Davis looks at me, Sister Shirley Davis, the elder, amen, that we've been knowing for years, looked at me and she said, I was wondering when you were going to do that. You know why? Because she knew that God was speaking to me about those folks. You've got to be able to listen to the voice of, the God, of God no matter where you are or what you're doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so Jesus tells her, Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not take, be taken away from her. The difference was that Mary had chosen to spend time listening to the Savior's voice. Amen. Martha was doing the natural things to try to make Jesus comfortable in his presence. I do not need Jesus comfortable in my presence. I need to spend time sitting at his feet in his presence. Hallelujah. Look what David said. I'm about through. Psalm 16, 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Sitting in his presence gives us strength. Look what Nehemiah 8, 10 said. And he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet. Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. People tell me, I just really can't live for God. I try hard, but I can't live for God. I'm like, you can't live for God by doing nothing. Jesus. The problem is, you haven't got that joy. Joy gives you strength. His joy gives you strength, not any other joy. People seek the joy of the world and try to compensate for the joy they're missing out with God by getting joy in the world. That's not the same joy. Amen. That joy doesn't amount to anything compared to the joy of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Whoo, my God. You know what happens when people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? You know what I always look for? I always look for that joy on their face. If you don't have the joy when you're speaking in tongues, if all of a sudden the Holy Ghost don't come on you and this big smile and your countenance changes, if that doesn't happen, you did not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You need to stay on the altar until you do. Okay? Being straight. I'm just gotta, I got to preach it like it is because I, I'm going to answer for this congregation, okay? Sure. Sitting in his presence gives us strength. All right. So for the personal revival to happen, we have to forsake those things that hinder us, our lustful, sinful nature, and to seek to stay in his presence. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set be for us. Hallelujah. Brother Music preached Sunday night and he was he was right on it. 
Amen. I, I last he didn't know last Tuesday night I had taught the first lessons in this series, and those lessons were on repentance. That lesson was on repentance, and and, and I talked about how that we have to be willing to fall at the altar and we have to be willing to repent of our sins and stay repent. It's a repentant life. Amen? Amen. You're not going to make it out of here without repentance. Amen. The key thing that we're, we're striving for here right now is personal revival. If I can get everybody in this church to repent on a daily basis, if I can keep you repenting, if I can keep you praying, if I can keep you talking to God, if I can keep you staying in His presence, you will not believe the miraculous that will happen in this church. But it's up to you. Amen. It's up to us. Hallelujah. So lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and run with patience the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't we just stand right now. Let's just lift our hands. Let's thank God for His Word tonight. Lord, I love You. Jesus, I worship You, O God. I praise You, O Lord. God, I want You to help me, Lord. Search my soul. Come on, let's just search our hearts right now before Him. Amen. Brother Music preached that message Sunday night. That was not for no reason. There was a reason behind that. And, and God had me already given me this message. It was already in here. Amen. For the most part before he preached that. So I want us just to ask God right now. Lord search me oh God. Lord try my heart. Try my mind. Try my spirit oh God. Lord if there's any wicked way in me. Come on pray that. Lord if there's any wicked way in me. Lord uh, God that you would cleanse me oh God. Let me be pure and clean and holy before you God. Uh, Lord, I've got to live for you, God. I've got to give you my all. I've got to be what you want me to be, God, in this world and beyond, God. Lord, I'm asking you right now, God, to search me, oh, Lord. God, I need you, God, in a close relationship, God. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be left behind when you come back. But, God, I want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You all oh, come on, hear me today. Amen. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him glory right now. Let's praise His name. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. Come on, we've got to repair ourselves. We've got to repair ourselves. Our, our spirit is wrong. We've got to break through and repair our spirit. Amen. Why do we have to do that? Because we've got revival coming. Amen. And revival will not happen until we get ourselves right with God. Revival needs to happen in the individual first. Then it can happen in this whole church and in this area around us. Amen. God's got people out there right now that are hungry for God. They don't even know what they're hungry for. They're, they're on drugs or they're, they're, they're alcoholics. And, and, and they really want to get off of it. They're like, man, this is just a pit. It's just a, it's a hole I'm in. I can't get out of it. I really need something else. You know what? This is what they're looking for. The search is over when you come into the house of God and you find Him in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's over then. <clears throat> My God. I want us to begin to pray. Amen. I, I want you to begin to repent. Make sure every day you repent. That you keep your life straight. You keep your mind straight. You keep your heart right with God because one day He's coming back for us. Hallelujah. Amen. This could be the day. I don't want to be left behind to you. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and worship Him right now. My God, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory and honor and praise. I worship you tonight, my God. Lord, I magnify the name of Jesus, that name above all names, God. Lord, and I praise you and I glorify you, my God. I worship you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give me my hand clap of praise right now. My God, I love you. Lord, I worship you, oh God. I want to be, Lord, repentant. I want to continue to live a repentant life, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God, my God. Amen. Revival is coming, church. I, I really believe the spirit of revival is already here. Amen. We've just got to seek after it. We've got to seek after God. 
The Bible tells me we are to seek the Lord while you may be found. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget uh, Sister Ashley and Sister Elizabeth. Oh, um, he's been in prayer too. Okay. We'll pray.